Tonight on Most Shocking, a wild robber takes the wheel and hits the road in a horrific crash. Then, an armed maniac opens fire on a cop and obliterates his ride. Plus, car thieves turn a mad escape into a demolition derby. And he's running. A biker with a bad attitude hey bites the dust. Later, cops draw their weapons on bank robbers. Get out of the car now! Who make a getaway out of a tight squeeze. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is Most Shocking. Chases and Crashes. Statesboro, Georgia. Troopers chase a speeding couple in a stolen gray Jeep. It's a run from the law that's going to end badly. The wife is at the wheel. And Lieutenant Bobby Durden is on their tail. We received the information from the tag that the vehicle was stolen from South Carolina. I spotted it in town and attempted to stop it. The slick road getaway grows more hazardous by the minute. The perps floor it to an intersection and come within inches of flattening a truck. But their luck is about to run out. She would fly through and, and disregard any stop sign, a lot of people out on the roads, and it was dangerous. Cops race to catch up to the gas-guzzling duo. It's too late to save them from disaster. In a heart-stopping second, the Jeep swerves off the road and rockets into the air. Flipping end over end. But what happens next is even more horrifying. The driver is ejected and slammed face first onto the blacktop. Lady was flung out. It was like slow motion, like, you know, this is not happening. As the woman lies motionless, the man crawls from the wreckage. Though injured, officers know he's dangerous. They aren't taking any chances. And they arrest him at gunpoint. Remarkably, both suspects survive and are charged for reckless driving and auto theft. There's no way someone could live through that. When this car-thieving couple runs from the law, they almost pay the price with their own lives. Miami, Florida. Inside this stolen minivan, a modern-day Bonnie and Clyde are attempting a getaway. They stole this red van and then were involved in an armed robbery at a convenience store. The frantic duo thinks they can give the cops the slip. Even though they're being tailed by cruisers and a helicopter. Afternoon traffic jams the four-lane street, so the lawless lovebirds make their own lane. Right down the median. Then. The driver in the black Honda tries to avoid the suspects. Metal meets metal. Sending the van skidding into a chain-link fence. The vehicle's front end is steaming. And so are the cops. One of the officers makes sure that this ride has come to a complete stop. 
This man was fighting us. He was doing anything he can to get away. He was desperate. In court, the judge throws the book at the female accomplice. All right, you're charged with grand theft auto. It will be years before she and her partner are behind the wheel again. You're always satisfied when you put the handcuffs on a bad guy like this. You've gotten them off the road, and no one got hurt. It was a good day. Fairbanks, Alaska. Cops spot a suspicious motorcyclist and decide to run the plate. Cameraman Tom Bonnet is on the ride along. It comes back expired as of like 93 or something. Super old, so he's obviously going to get pulled over. But the second the officer tries to pull him over, the guy guns it. It's a, it's a chase that I never expected to start happening. This is the first police chase I'd ever been in in the lead car. The suspect speeds near triple digits on backcountry roads. Turn up here somewhere. I've got my hand on the dash and I'm kind of worried at this point. He's going to wipe it. He's going to wipe it. Proving his desperation, the belligerent biker makes a reckless move. Patrol car stops at the intersection while the suspect vanishes ahead. We can't figure out where he went. But Officer Adams isn't about to throw in the towel. Can I out for him if he turns off? So we start looking down some side streets and we see him way down there off a right hand turn. Now that they're back on his tail, the man starts to make strange hand gestures. Hey, tell us which way he's going to turn. That's nice, though. He's either trying to do some kind of, you know, left hand hand signals or he's trying to flip us off. Suddenly, the road turns to dirt. Hang on. And as the mad motorcyclist tries to accelerate, he loses control. Tom and Officer Adams jump out of the cruiser. You don't know what this guy's got. He could have a gun. It's pitch black. You've got to run toward him. It's a perfect opportunity to get injured. He could shoot you. Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Hands out! On your stomach now! Even though the man sounds like he's in pain. Officer Adams isn't taking any chances. Other hand, relax. We're going to need an ambulance. EMTs are quick to the scene. They confirm the man has broken his ankle. You need to breathe for me. Don't touch my... Had he just pulled over in the first place, none of this would have happened. The driver of that motorcycle, he got off lucky. He could have just died right there. Coming up, bank robbers ride on their ribs and get mowed down by police. Then, cops ram a stolen meat truck. And the chase ends with some serious road rash. Plus, a driver goes off-road to run from the law. Then runs right into trouble. Next on Most Shocking Chases and Crashes. Grayson, Georgia. With guns drawn, police converge on two bank robbers. Their red SUV is cornered in traffic. Then, the perps squeeze between two cars. The standoff is now a chase. Luckily, 
Corporal Dennis Peters is in a nearby cruiser and ready for the pursuit. 17 radio vehicles going 1080. We're headed westbound on 78. Passing very quickly. They were trying to get any cost to get away. Usually when they get in that mode, it's called fight or flight, they're either going to run or they're going to fight. The reckless robbers rip through one red light and then another. Radio coming through the intersection at McGee. Radio got 41. The bank robbers nearly T-bone a black sedan. The bandits near miss doesn't slow them down. But up ahead, the cops have something that will. The officers nail them with spike strips. All you need to be allowed is front tires flat on the vehicle. They might not be able to control their crippled truck, but the driver takes the precaution to use his turn signal. They hit another car as they go to make the turn. The thieves' desperate detour is about to go horribly wrong. They're going down a dead end street. Their tires finally shred. Then they run out of road. With no way out, the fugitives ditch the truck. Corporal Peters can't stop in time on the loose gravel. He smashes into the SUV and almost flattens the crook who gets caught holding the bag. Get him, get him! We got him, we got him. The cops capture the fleeing felons and recover $10,000. What a damn good catch, man. Dude, I ain't been one of those in a long time. I'm glad that no one was hurt in the chase, that everybody walked away and went home that night. Except for the two bank robbers. These two criminals thought they were scoring some easy money. Radio coming through the intersection at McGee. But after this dangerous high-speed chase, all they got was some hard time. Livonia, Michigan. Running from police in a stolen deep freeze meat truck is Billy Bingham. The packed meat mobile is heavy and hard to handle. Cops have a bone to pick with the perp and bear down on him. The lead officer lines up for a pit maneuver. Then... Cruiser rockets the vehicle with a well-placed hit. It doesn't slow the blockheaded delinquent. But Bingham is going to get a lesson about running from the law. It's not a good idea. The police cruiser slams into the truck's bumper. The vehicle flips over. And slides into a guardrail. Officers pull the day's driver from the truck. His injuries are minor, but he's sentenced to four to twenty years in prison. When this meat market thief tries to outrun the police, officers use extreme measures to put his escape plans permanently on ice.
Davie, Florida. A squad of police cars pursues a man wanted for domestic violence. The fleeing suspect, William Rosenbaum, just assaulted his wife with a gun. Here you see Broward Sheriff uh, Aviation Unit. The suspect rummages in the front seat, reaching for his weapon. Rosenbaum drives like a maniac and charges blindly through a red light. He barely misses ramming a pickup. Seconds later, the suspect blows through another intersection. Then thunders across a median. When the chief skids off the road, one officer jumps out of his cruiser, weapon drawn in warning. Rosenbaum suddenly opens fire. The officer has no choice but to defend himself. Shooting fire. Clock shots fired. The driver charges into oncoming lanes unscathed, but his vehicle is not as lucky. He does have a tire out. One of his, his rear tires is out. The pursuit is about to go horribly wrong. That tire's disintegrating. Oh! The Jeep swerves off the shoulder toward trees on the roadside. Then smashes into one with devastating force. Rosenbaum is pulled from the wreckage. He later passes away. Not from crash injuries, but a gunshot wound to his head. An autopsy reveals the fatal bullet wasn't from an officer's weapon. The despondent man took his own life. What began with an assault ended in a chilling impact police officers won't soon forget. Coming up, a smuggler dumps his human cargo. Then smashes his delivery van. Then, fleeing carjackers rip up the road and knock themselves out of the chase. Plus, it's disaster for a reckless driver escaping the law. That's next on Most Shocking Chases and Crashes. La Jolla, Texas. Flying down the highway is a man driving an SUV. His registration tags are expired. Officer Ramon Gonzalez tails the driver. I went ahead and activated my lights. Once I did upon doing so, the vehicle started to accelerate. As they enter a residential area, Officer Gonzalez keeps a close watch on the runaway driver's vehicle. Turns out he doesn't need such a sharp eye after all. Four passengers jump out of the vehicle and make a mad dash away. I'm thinking to myself, why are these individuals running? Are they undocumented subjects? Are they wanted by an agency? His cargo dumped. The driver returns to the highway. Suddenly, he ducks back into the same neighborhood. The driver makes a few more deliveries. Three more men hit the road running. Now the madman is flying solo. 
Reaching speeds over 100 miles an hour. The driver detours to an off ramp. A sharp left turn is too much for the renegade to handle. He plows into a pillar and stops. This time, for good. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! When Officer Gonzalez gets a close look at the driver, he's surprised to see a familiar face. He turned out to be our crossing guard right across the street from the police department. During the day, he was a custodian for the, for the school district. Charged with evading arrest, this janitor has the mess of a lifetime to clean up. Ferndale, Michigan. A sheriff's deputy is hot on the tail of two carjackers in a stolen Dodge Charger. Suspects Roger Tisby and Dennis Nunley are considered armed and dangerous. The terrors fly through a red light, right into oncoming lanes. Seconds later, they nearly skid out of control. Surprisingly, the driver uses his turn signal before he makes his next move. The frantic suspects fly through a suburb at suicidal rates. Then, disaster strikes. The thieves' reckless driving catches up with them. They crank a hard left too quickly. The charger skids and slams into a light post, then flips. Incredibly, the two speed demons are uninjured and taken into custody. These crazed carjackers are lucky to be alive. A fact they'll have plenty of time to appreciate while serving time behind bars. Ferndale, Michigan. An ordinary night, but for Officer David Spellman, that's about to change. I noticed the driver driving past me, and his general appearance made me suspicious, at which time I initiated a traffic stop. The man hands over his license. Spellman returns to his car. We discovered that his driver's license was suspended, and then he also had a warrant for his arrest. But before Spellman can take him into custody, the man panics and takes off. My adrenaline kicked in. I was extremely excited. My heart rate was high. I was sweating. He speeds through a neighborhood, but runs out of road and plows into a guardrail. It gives Spellman the perfect opportunity to take him out. I tried to employ what we call the pit maneuver. It did not stop the vehicle, but it did slow him down by flattening his front tire. The desperate driver keeps going. As he attempts to escape, he loses control. The outlaw aims for the freeway on-ramp, but misses. He slams into the median and comes to a crashing stop. Now the car and the man dangle dangerously above the freeway. I could see that if it was going to drop, it would have fell about 30 feet down to the interstate. The offender gets out. Backup arrives and grabs him. He seemed dazed um, and unable to run. No one's hurt. Not even the suspect. But Officer Spellman will remember this strange case of fleeing. And eluded. 
This incident will always stick in my memory just for the sole fact that the driver actually gave me his ID and identified himself before he ran. Coming up, a freeway collision turns a drunk driver into a mangled mess. And... A hell-raising juvenile flips out. Plus, a crazed motorist rampage ends in a terrifying crash. Stay tuned for more most shocking chases and crashes. intoxicated driver runs from police. He blazes down the highway at over a hundred miles an hour. Officers close in on the fugitive. He tries to escape up the nearest exit, threading his way through traffic. The suspect blows the red light. And suddenly... Sharon Hooper is driving the pickup when she hears the squealing of tires. It wasn't like a, a screeching tire. It was it was a much deeper pitch noise. I was just getting ready to say, what is that? And I turned my head to look at my husband, and that was it. The Hooper's truck fills with smoke. I was just like, I have to get out, I have to get out. And my husband's like, don't move, don't move, you know, you could be hurt. But the couple escapes with minor injuries. As for the renegade, he gets hammered. After a trip to the hospital, he's taken into custody. Had their pickup reached the intersection just a second earlier, the outcome could have been disastrous. We think about all the time he would have T-boned us, and that could have been way worse. For the Hoopers, that one second might have meant the difference between life and death. In Russia, police chase a reckless booze hound on the freeway. The suspect drifts dangerously close to a slow-moving semi. Then... The desperate drunkard slams into the truck. The brutal collision sends the car tumbling into the median. The car is a pile of twisted metal. An officer opens the door, expecting the worst. His body is pressed against the dash, and his legs are wrapped around the steering wheel. Cops can't tell if he's alive or dead. Paramedics are quick to the scene. An officer tries opening the passenger door and gets an unexpected surprise. The driver is alive. Despite the horrific accident, his injuries are not life threatening. But he's looking at fines and possibly jail time. A small price to pay for such a devastating crash. Bono, South Carolina. Police are on the tail of boozed up driver Brent Mapes.
the blitzed motorist can barely stay on the road. Officers want him stopped immediately. The lead cruiser moves in for a pit maneuver. It's a clean hit. The Miata spins a full 360 degrees. The brazen madman continues his rampage, driving on the wrong side of the road at speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Cops hit him again. But the careening criminal keeps going. In the backcountry, he can't run out of road, but can run out of rubber. The grinding disintegrates his left tire. Unable to maintain control, the crook fishtails and smashes into a tree. The chase is over. But the police are done with mates. He's sentenced to a year in prison. When this driver goes on a drunken joyride, he's no match for the cop's hard-hitting plan. Coming up, cops chase a bad guy who makes a bad move. Then, a 14-year-old speed demon turns his car into a death trap. Hold on, hold on! Plus, a murderous carjacker's hot wheels becomes a flaming hell on wheels. Next, on most shocking chases and crashes. Nichols Hills, Oklahoma. When Officer Stephen West tries to stop this car for a broken light, he had no idea what he was in for. I wasn't going to issue a citation, but when I turned on my lights, he took off running. Soon, the officer learns why. Headquarters 65, be advised that vehicles, uh, stolen vehicles. The car thief flies around blind curves at 80 miles an hour. He had no regard for anybody else on the street that night. He was just trying to get away. To protect other motorists, Officer West considers calling off the chase. He never gets the chance. Less than a minute after the chase began... The speeding suspect loses control and crashes into a tree. The impact from the tree had smashed the front of the vehicle to where the bumper was 11 inches from the windshield. West rushes to the car where he makes a shocking discovery. The driver is a 14-year-old boy. He was unconscious and convulsing, having seizures. To make matters worse, the engine compartment is on fire, and the boy's legs are pinned. I ran back to my patrol car, grabbed my fire extinguisher, extinguished the flames. For the headquarters, fire and still on the way. The fire is out, but the juvenile's prognosis is grim. I heard the paramedics say that his eyes were fixed and dilated and that his condition wasn't very good at all. The teen is rushed to the hospital. Thankfully, he will recover from his injuries. But his short run from the law almost cost him his life. This is the most violent chase that I've been in. The damage to the vehicle and to the driver. I've never seen anything like that before. Saraland, Alabama. A patrolman chases a driver who refuses to pull over for a traffic violation. 
he's got a good reason to run. Inside the cab, the passenger reaches for something. The suspect pushes his SUV to triple-digit speeds. The officer races to catch up. Then, the driver swerves off the road. The lawbreaker charges over the median to make an escape. But his vehicle loses traction, plows through a road sign, and crashes onto its side. The man tries to slip away, but officers grab him and his accomplice. But then cops make a gruesome discovery. A dead man in the back seat. But he's not an accident victim. The fugitives killed him three days before and stole his car. It began as a minor traffic bust. But in the end, officers wound up busting a pair of murderers. Daytona Beach, Florida. An infrared camera captures a carjacker on a hell-raising nighttime rampage. The fleeing man is John Loxident. He jacked the vehicle from a teenage girl. Now, Officer Michael Terry is in pursuit, and he knows the night won't end well. It actually started getting a little dramatic as soon as, uh, as, soon as we got behind him. Overhead, Officer Dave Schwarzfeger follows the chase. When you put a helicopter over any scene with the ground officers in a perimeter around that, we're going to catch the bad guy. But the suspect is determined not to let that happen. He sideswipes innocent drivers, knocking them out of the way. And he just had no regard. I mean, whatever it took for him to get away, he was going to. Officers throw out spike strips. The tires explode in a cloud of sparks and smoke. The stolen pickup, now a fireball, Lossident makes an impulsive maneuver and unleashes hell. He slams on his brakes, spins out, hits a drainage culvert, and barrel rolls into oncoming lanes. He had lost control of the vehicle, and when those wheels caught the grass instead of sliding through, it catapulted him over. O'Terry and his fellow officers move in on the fiery scene. He was basically, you know, inside hanging upside down, just staring at us in disbelief as to what happened. Lossident is rescued. But cops soon learn the chilling reason he was so desperate to escape. It was something he did before stealing the truck. We found out that he was involved in a homicide of a 15-year-old female. Thanks to a high-tech eye in the sky and cops that never gave up, this killer carjacker's escape went up in flames. Coming up, drivers on a rampage. Go wheels up. That's next on Most Shocking Chases and Crashes. County, Georgia. Donald Jeremy Tall just blew a traffic light. He's on probation, has no license, and has the lives of three teenage passengers in his hands. The lead unit surges forward. And the fugitive jams the brakes. Then he pulls a hard right. nearly disastrous results. 
The car turns too fast and jumps the curb. But that's not the worst of it. He just misses getting flattened by a bus. The officer tries to knock some sense into the joyrider. But the renegade puts the pedal to the metal. He charges down the back road at 75 miles an hour. Two more units join the chase. They try to box in the car. But the slippery suspect finds a way out. Tall spots a side street and makes a last second escape. Police units scramble. One of them right into a telephone pole. Seeing his chance, the lead officer rams the fleeing vehicle. Twice. The rattled runaway floors it. But when he rounds the next bend, it's all over. The suspect takes the curve too quickly. His car fishtails out of control. It plows into the road bank. Then flips. The three days passengers crawl out of the wreckage. Their trusted driver takes off running. But cops make sure he doesn't get very far. And lucky for him, the officer that wrecked earlier sustains only minor injuries. Donald Tall put his friends in mortal danger. And will now spend the next five years spinning his wheels behind bars. When criminals run... It's up to police to stop them. Whether on highways, back roads, or off-road. Because when chases turn into crashes... Quick thinking cops hit the brakes on danger and save lives.